Hi, this is Brian Ormers recording a lecture on uh, care of patients with diabetes mellitus, specifically of talking about insulin therapy for medical surgical nursing at the University of Sioux Falls. So some of the things we want to look at are, you know, looking at different types of insulin, including uh, when their onset, peak, and duration of action is, compare different types of insulin uh, regimes, uh, look at the different factors in that influence uh, insulin absorption. We'll talk about, you know, how to teach a patient to do this and give the insulin. And then we'll talk about patient teaching. Realize that there are several types of insulin um, that are available. There's sh rapid, short-acting, intermediate, and long-acting. And realize that they can be used um, in a different combination depending on the type of patient. And so realize that there are different doses and vials and we have to be very careful with what we're using on this. Also be very clear that a unit syringe is going to be much different than like a cc syringe or a milliliter syringe. Um, with this realize you know we try to duplicate the normal insulin release pattern from the pancreas as close as possible um, but of course we're never going to be exactly the same as what it was. So we do our best. So we can look at some of these rapid acting ones such as Novolog or Humalog um, are some very common ones of this. And so onset is pretty quick. I mean it's quarter, so like 15 minutes, peaks in about an hour, and has a duration of three to five hours. Now we can go with some short acting, which are uh, Humulin regular or Novolin regular. And so within that, your onset's just a little bit longer. Your peak happens in two to five hours and with the duration of five to eight hours. NPH is an even longer acting type of situation and this is onset 1.5, peak 4 to 12, and duration of 16 plus hours. Now a unique one for this would be like insulin glargine and so your onset is two to four hours but you're really not supposed to have a peak with this one but it does last for about 24 hours and so it depends on the person. Some might see a peak but most do not. And some uh, will fall a little less than 24 hours, but it depends on how they're reacting to the medication. So you can kind of see when your body is normally giving these kind of situations, how you try and time that with food. And so you want to try and give your insulin, um, you know, if you get your duration of, you know, 15 minutes to peak when you're having that, that sugar load uh, with meals and such like that. So you kind of see your peaks and troughs related to uh, sugar, insulin, starches, sucrose, all those kind of things. So lots of different ways to do this. Um, each patient will probably be a little different with this one. There are single daily injections that you can use. And so we'll talk about that and, and some of the anti-diabetic medications in, in another slide. Um, there's also some other factors with this that, you know, you're combining different ones, so short and intermediate and long acting, um, depending on what the patient needs. And so just realize that we could adapt and change. And this might change depending on the person, depending on their situation, depending on if they're having any, you know, current illnesses that are throwing their, their plan out of whack a little bit. So what affects insulin absorption? So the site, so abdomen is probably one of the fastest sites, then deltoid, then thigh, then butt. Um, we do want to rotate the injection sites because otherwise you can get lipohypertrophy. So meaning that those cells kind of expand or they can get uh, some atrophy as well. But I've seen more lipohypertrophy. So we do like to rotate within one anatomic site. Um, so oftentimes, you know, going around the belly button for the ab abdomen or up and down the leg, um, it your absorption just remains more constant than if you're, instead of flipping from deltoid to thigh to butt to stomach, so different injection sites, probably around the abdomen is most common what I've seen, but you can do it here on the deltoids, on the glutes, on the legs. So, so you've got a wide variety of different places that you can inject insulin. Ways to do it, um, you know, there are insulin injectors like this where you get pens, which is kind of a nice deal. And then you might have uh, insulin pumps, which can be tied into a continuous glucose monitor 
and then you've got this pump device here which is secreting insulin at a lower rate um, and it's more st steady and more stable and the nice thing about this is that it's supposed to try and alleviate some of the peaks and troughs that you get when you give an injection Other things that would impact absorption, so the depth that you do this, so if you go too deep and you go into the IM, it's going to absorb faster than what you want it to. And so a 90 degree angle is generally speaking what we do, we pinch the skin up um, and try and get into that sub-Q tissue. I have seen some people do a 45 degree angle just to be more superficial, but I think it's better if you'd use a smaller needle um, and go with the 90 degree angle, then use a bigger needle and go with 45. We do not aspirate for this one, um, and so make sure that that that's old practice that you, we no longer follow. Um, we look at the timing of this. You know, is it given the same time every day? Because you know, of course, the timing will impact how that plays out in their body. And then mixing insulins, you know, clear to cloudy and those kind of fun things that hopefully you remember. Patient education, so with storage, you know, try to you know avoid temps less than thirty six or greater than eighty six. So keep it out of the sunshine, keep it out of direct heat and light. Avoid excess of shaking. So oftentimes we store it in the refrigerator until they need it. And then if it's unused after 28 days, then we throw it away, generally speaking. Always make sure your patients have got spared just in case they need it, in case they drop it, lose it, whatever else it's they need to have a spare um, that they can access. Uh, Pre-filled syringes, stable up to 30 days when refrigerated. Um, you know, try to store upright uh, as possible, but I haven't heard much about this one. So dose preparation. So inspect the insulin. Make sure it's looking the way it should. Is it clear? Is it cloudy? Is it have any particulate in it? Make sure that you're using the right insulin syringes that are unit based, not cc's or milliliters. Um, and so while these are mLs, make sure that we often draw it up in units. Um, if a patient is larger, then of course we need a larger needle. Just try and get in that sub Q tissue. Um, and then don't reuse needles. That concludes this portion of insulin. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact me.